Hello, and here's another video on Epic 40K terrain. So last video, we looked at the plastic terrain, stuff you can get off eBay or the old Epic 40K buildings, how to paint them up, how to base them, make them look decent for the battlefield. Today though, we're gonna look at the cardboard terrain. So a lot of guys who still play Epic, I know at the club, um, there's me and there's James, um, but looking on some of the Facebook groups, a lot of guys still have their old cardboard terrain. And we're going to look at how to keep this stuff going, because some of it's 30 years old. Most of the stuff I've got from uh, Second Distance Space Marine and um, Titan Legion. So it's, it's 25 years plus um, in its age. So can get a bit ratty and teared and bust up so we're going to look at how to kind of keep it going and then we're going to look at um, making terrain um, separate out of your old bits so what I've got is a few of my orc plastic terrain sorry not plastic cardboard terrain and most of this has been flat packed down and I just built it today to kind of show you uh, this is all from Titan Legion and as you can see, they're little cardboard buildings. And as you can see, they don't really stay together that well because they've been broken down so many times. And they're starting to tear and just with age. So we want to kind of keep them going and get a bit of age out of them or a few more years out of them. So what I've done is, and I'll be doing it for all these buildings, is kind of what I did with the plastic stuff. And that's to mount it on a stand um put some texture onto the onto the stand and kind of made them rigid and maybe have them for another 20 odd years uh so like this and this is very similar now it's very similar to the plastic train now what you'll see is a couple of chips and such in the uh in the basins because this has been used plenty over the years <clears throat> i just need to touch it up a little bit but the building itself is in grand condition. See what happens is over the years, if you're taking these apart over and over again, you'll see here, you'll get this happening. And it's just wear and tear. They're cardboard. They're not going to last forever, unfortunately. Um, so what we can do is kind of make them rigid, put them on a base and hope, hope that they last a bit longer. So in this scenario, what I've done is I've glued it together with um, PVA, mostly on the inside. So if I take this one, what I'll do is I will PVA in here and make sure it's held down. And once it's dry, it'll form up and not keep opening like that. And then super glue or PVA onto plastic card, get it onto the plastic card, and you'll end up with a nice plastic card base. And then just following what I did in the other video, water down PVA around the outside, dip it in the sand. The sand, again, I use is Bacchus 6 mil sand. If you look on Google for Bacchus, you'll find them. It sounds very fine. And again, then use just your three color scheme up, really. So in my case, I like the desert. So it's kind of deserty, olive drab, kind of khaki look. I make that lighter up until the point that I... I'm happy with the um, the sand level, as I say. This one's been used plenty, so it needs touched up a little bit, but the rigidity keeps them alive a lot longer. Taking them apart over and over again. As you can see here, this one's actually starting to separate, so again, I'll glue that together and fix that and kind of, kind of getting everything back into decent order. I've got one of the big old Imperial ones from Space Marine 2nd Edition, I think this is from. Um, with these, again, if you're taking them down and flat packing them, what happens is this plastic bit here has little pegs. I wonder if I can, yeah, there we go. These pegs, and they, if they start to snap, you're, you're boned really. So what I would suggest is it'll, building them, securing them to some plastic card. Basically, the plastic card will look better as well. 
in these cases, you'll see that's, this side comes apart and this side comes apart. I'm going to run some PVA or super glue in there so they all attach nice and firmly. And then I've got a big plastic drum thing, yeah, like a storage um, container that they all go into. I think I picked them up in Home Bargains, but B&Q, any, any hardware store will do them. Um, it, it takes up a wee bit more space than flat packing them, obviously, but it'll keep them alive a lot longer, which is what we want. Kind of more, well, to use, but also as a historical curiosity, because these aren't really made anymore, so they're lovely to have. Um, in regards to the plastic bit, you've got two options. The really lazy way is to just give it a black wash, and you'll see there's loads of detail for the black to run into and that's it just literally a black wash over it in my case i used the red brick the terracotta from um the previous video and then dry brushed it um heavy dry brush over it to give it that worn kind of not used that much anymore look i've seen guys online who have put flock and tufts and stuff on the sides of the buildings and such so that it looks like nature's overtaken it again and I quite like that look as well but it doesn't really fit with the aesthetic of Orc World which is what I have so talking on Orc World this is what this is all for this is my random set of epic 6mm bits that I have I'm going to try and do something with them but as I say, I just wanted to cover off the cardboard terrain, really. It's something a lot of these have, and we want to keep it going and keep it usable. And I had a terrible habit of just, whenever I was finished with it, I would break it all down. But it takes its toll on the cardboard. Um, same for Necromonda as well. Unfortunately, old Necromonda, it's very bulky and very hard to not take it down after usage. Uh, but these are 6 mil. they're smaller. You can get one of them storage cases and wham bam, they all fit into it. And a little bit of time and effort with the plastic card, a bit of sand and a bit of paint, and you can get them based as well. So, orcs. Orcs is my first love. And I want to build some orc buildings and terrain. That's not just these plastic jobbies, or cardboard jobbies. Um, some homemade terrain, some old school hobby work. So I'm going to go through all this stuff and see what I can dig out. Now orcs are very forgiving in regards to being able to build things with because there is no set template. You can get away with a lot of things, a lot of um, poorly made ho home hobbies, hobby craft. But um, they're good. They're good for starting out and learning how to make things. I've been doing it for years and years and years. Um, unfortunately, a lot of my original stuff has been lost to time. But I do have a few bits that I've made in the past, for example. And as you hear this, again, it is plastic card. And it's just out of the bits box. This is a little garage type of thing I put together. Um, part of a Mega Gargant. Little turret from a Mega Gargant for a wee bit of defence. Two knackered old gum wagons. A bit of another gum wagon. Lollipop sticks around the edge. And then, yeah, coated and based as, as usual. With the back of sand and making it look kind of deserty. Making sand look like sand. Hmm. Anyway, so yeah, this is really quickly fired together. A few years back and does the job and I would like to make some more. So in this case, this is just a guard kind of out in the wilderness. Some orc mech has set himself up a little shop, a little bit of paintwork around the edges, some decals on this side. I put the six clan decals on the side. So he's open to business to any of the clans. He has no affiliation and it looks great on the table. So with that in mind, I thought I'd do something else. So orcs in the lore, we're always told that, you know, they they just build what comes to mind and the mechs kind of fire together, trucks and wagons and 
all this type of stuff with with abandonment to rhyme or reason. With that being said, I have these. Lots and lots of these. These are my spares. In fact, I've got more spares of these. These are battle wagons. These are the original battle wagons for orcs. If I bring this one up, if it focuses. A little gun, wheels, spikes on the wheels, cool little skull on the front, spiky. Supposedly 10 orcs can fit inside this. Must be a tight fit. But the thing about them is they're all identical. And the only way to differentiate them is through the paint schemes or um, snipping bits off and jerry-rigging your own bits to them. So I thought most of my orcs have these. I've got a lot of orcs and all my orc transports for the boys are mostly these old battle wagons. And I thought to myself, why would they all be driving the same battle wagon? So I've decided I'm going to build essentially a car sales room, a showroom, a lot. So we've got maybe an entrepreneurial orc with a couple of mechs who came upon this design and all the orcs, regardless of their clan, go to him to buy their battle wagons. And so that's why all my orcs on Orc World have these type of battle wagons. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have these on the lot, kind of sitting out. So you can imagine, like like any lot, if you went to look at, to buy a new car, you'd have cars in the lot. And they'll all be different colours. Um, then I'm thinking maybe, maybe something like this to the side. With maybe a car inside, you know, the showroom car, the display model. Um, we'll wall it off or something like that. Maybe put a defensive gun on it in case other orcs are trying to steal it. We'll just basically go through these bits and fire together something. This is a showroom. This is not where these battle wagons are built. That'll be another project where we'll get the factory maybe done where they're being built. But essentially we're going to use what I've got here. All this jazz, which is mostly the remnants of an old Mega Gargant. Some old... Oh blimey, second edition, I think that's the front end of a Rhino from way back in the day. Um, I think that's the old 40k Rampart thing, this. I don't know, there's lots of random bits. There's, there's an old Warlord resin BT7 turret, BT780, yeah, the Harger one. Cool, um, lots of things in here. Bits of older Dread or blimey, that's off an old Gargant. As I say, lots of random bits here. So we're going to try and put together something that looks kind of cool and something that we can use as a car children for works. And yeah, so we'll come back and see what we've got. And so here we've got the car sales room for the orcs. The lot with a couple of battle wagons on there and basically go through how the design came up. So, with orcs, you can get kind of, as I said, get away with a lot of stuff, but there's still got to be some sort of logic to it. If it's just completely random, it it it, it looks it it won't make sense. So, in this situation, well, firstly, I mean, if I show this, we won. This is a lot simpler design, but as a garage, you got to think about our garage would function essentially so you've got the entrance to the garage it's orcs so they've got a wee turret gun side wee generator of some sort and then the bits off to the side you've seen this in any garage type of thing or kind of like a breaker's yard type of thing so that that that's how that came along not, not a lot of logic in it you know what i mean but it's uh it has a design it's functional and the same goes for this. So if we go around it, there is a sort of a wall that I've put together, broken up between old imperial ruins and some things the orcs have fashioned themselves. I've got a little orc emblem stand here. And I used two old rulers on either side to keep it there. Now, firstly, that means it can be rolled in and out. 
you know, bad weather or what, they can move it back in if they need to or what. But also, it makes it helps the um, the actual emblem stand there on its own. It's just too delicate; it would fall over, be easy easily broken. So <clears throat> that's that part. Then we've got the lot itself. Now none of these are glued in because I'll be painting these separately and then gluing them in. Um, but that's where, as I said, I wanted my cars to be, or the battle wagons. Um, I had a little gap here, and I was going to fix the walls together, and I thought, well, as I say, um, it's got to be logical of some sort. Um, so if you're going to test drive one of these, if you're an orc knob, and you've got your teeth heavy, and you're going to buy yourself and your boys a, a battle wagon, you want to test the goods. So I had a spare little turret, which belongs to one of these. And I put it on top of this and made a little, a little turret there um, so that they can test fire the turret off into the distance. The actual showroom lot itself, again, there's a gun mounted. Um, I might change it out though. I'm not too sure. I do have other ones about. But it's 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 self-defense type of thing. We're still talking orcs here. Um, a little portcullis thing because um, it looks cool. I put part of an old Gargant gun and snipped away at it a bit and put it into the side and it looks like a nice generator for lights and heating or coffee machines or whatever the orcs would have inside there. And this isn't glued on. This is going to be the fancy battle wagon on the top. So kind of like the way there's little little lip there. Um, so he's going to be all shiny and painted up really shiny and metal and kind of stand out a bit there. And then plastic card, so some old sprues and snipped together and kind of made to look like scaffolding or something. They works to put together to put this big old sign on. Now I never throw away any of my offcuts from the plastic card because it's so handy to have. So all that is, is a bit of plastic card cut out, glued onto the scaffolding and then another bit cut into triangles and dotted around the outside to make it look a bit orky. Um, so yeah, we'll get some sand on it and get it painted up and it'll be our little orc showroom car sales lot. Um, yeah, so we'll paint these wagons in several different colours. Got five of them here, so we'll go for a couple of colours. Um, got the sexy one on top that'll be, I'm thinking maybe doing it pure silver. Like really eye catching. And then there's one inside, which isn't glued in either. And it'll be painted up. And it's, as I say, the uh, display model that you can peruse and get in and check out before you, you put your hard-earned teeth down to buy a battle wagon. So, yeah, um, we'll come back to the finished thing, really. Um, this is going to follow the same techniques that I did with in the other video with <clears throat> the plastic buildings. We're going to... Paint, well, I'm going to PVA the whole thing, all the white that you see, except for the um, the sign will be PVA'd and sanded, and then the sand will be brought up, and then we'll go in and we'll paint the actual the actual building and the signs and the walls around the outside. Hopefully, get some decals on, <clears throat> come up with a snazzy name for the for the um, showroom, the car salesman or battle wagon salesman, and. Yeah, hopefully it'll look cool and a nice feature, a nice terrain feature for Orc World. So come back and we'll see that. So here it is, the finished product. The Orky car dealership or battle wagon dealership of the 41st millennium. Battle wagons are us. So the thought process behind getting it where it is as I said earlier on, was having a lot where the cars, well, the battle wagons, same cars, the vehicles would be parked, and then the building where you would go in and um, sign your paperwork, get a credit agreement, whatever, whatever way the orcs would hammer this out to buy your battle wagon from Battle Wagons or Us. I have to say, I've never seen anyone do a... a car dealership in the 41st millennium. This may be a really bad idea that I've had. I don't know. I think it's cool. I'm quite 
impressed with how it looks. I think it looks quite cool. Very cool, in fact. Um, so the sand, as I said in my previous video, uh, the sand was the same technique. It's water down PVA, get your sand on, let it dry. Once it's dry, give it a wash of dark um, brown wash. Army painter, dark tone I think I used. And then it's Zandari and then your shanty bone. All the walls, well, the ruined imperial walls that you see dotted about on the side here and at the front, they were done grey, dry brush of grey. The other walls, the building and the big sign were all painted metal. Um, whatever the modern equivalent of bulk on metal is, I can never remember the name of it. And then that was dry brushed with Runefang steel. Then, to keep them unaffiliated with any of the clans, I picked three colours, three prom prominent colours. Um, blue, red and green. Blue is just a lucky colour for all orcs. Death Skulls kind of use it a lot, but it's in with red as well, which is fast. And green is the colour of orcs, so you're going to be buying a fast, probably get lucky in a orky vehicle. Who What's not the love? The battle wagons, they were painted separately. Um, the one on the top, I said I was going to do silver. I decided to change, well, I did change my mind and painted it gold as if they've gold plated an entire battle wagon because that seems like something an orc car salesman would do. And the other vehicles are all contrasted. Well, sorry, the, the bottom right hand corner one is just straight up silver metal. The rest of them are all contrasted. Um, and that, that's it, straight con contrast. There's no there's no decals or or variation to them. This is these are all brand spanking new on the on the show roof, show floor battle wagons for the local orcs to peruse and put their hard earned teeth down on. A couple of things that I added in um <clears throat> the tar at the back with the gun turret on it this little job over here uh, i painted it blue and my idea behind that was if you're going to if you're going to go and test a car the car salesman used car salesman or um, a new car they're going to try and make it the best they can and orc things usually aren't built that great see you paint it blue it's lucky the orc subconsciously is going to think that it's a luckier gun because it's blue and it's probably going to shoot better so yeah a little bit of sales technique there for our orc salesman so we'll leave it around it's it's fairly simple i showed you it before i painted it and that's it painted i think it looks all right it'll do the business it's a cool big colorful terrain feature little bit of function though behind it a few things to keep an eye on oh let's fix my camera here if you are doing this type of thing you still gotta remember it's going to have to work on the battlefield so yeah it's a bit of fun and it's a really good line block or line of sight blocking because that sign's huge um but like at the front here that's the way in and out but i did measure it i didn't just haphazardly throw everything down so a stand of orcs does still fit through there. You can get a mob in there, no problem, to fortify it. So always keep an eye out for that type of thing. Keep keep your mind on how is this actually going to function in game as well as just looking cool if you're going to build something mad like orc mall or whatever you want to do. Um, other than that, kept the colours very basic. As I said, the green, blue and red couple of metallics and yeah didn't go overdo it um, a couple of decals on there I'm not particularly great with decals uh, but I did throw a few in there just to um, fill in this dead space in between the battle wagons or us and the battle wagons or us I'm not going to pretend that I painted that on I, I used a sharpie and wrote that on I think I went a wee bit heavy with some of the weathering on the sign though I used a bit of typhus corrosion, I think it is, just to kind of weather it a wee down a wee bit. But 
I might go back and fix that. It shouldn't be too difficult to paint over and re redo. But overall, I'm not that fast. I think it looks pretty groovy. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. We'll give you some ideas of what to do yourself. Get your bits box out and get building and see what you can put together. Thanks. Bye.